watch fans, it's Anders here on Watch On Channel. Today, a review of a watch I just got in a few days ago. As you can see here, it is a Type A11 Vincent Speranza. This is a military watch from a company called Presidus Watches, and they specialize in these commemorative watches of World War II. It is assembled in the US with imported parts. You remove this part with the Type A11. Here you get the Presidus name, then you open this part, and inside you find the watch. As you see, this is very much a military, kind of clinical, anonymous vintage watch. You also, besides the watch, get some extra things in the box you see here. Pull it up. So what do we find? We of course find a little pamphlet, instruction manual, A little hang tag, you see here. And this watch is going to be released in November this year, but you can now pay $1 and get a really nice pre-order price. Then you get this nice dog tag. This is very military inspired, of course, but this is actually the warranty card, so you use your phone to scan this QR code to actually activate your warranty. So that's a cool little detail, actually. Very military. And... You also get this other little strap here. So let's have a look at the strap. And I'm also going to try to watch on this strap because it's very cool. You actually get an additional strap with this watch. So here we have the Presidus A11 Vince Speranza Special Edition watch up close. You see very anonymous very kind of uh, almost looks like a vintage pilot's watch, but it is actually a watch that is inspired by some of the World War II watches that were produced by a lot of American watch manufacturers during World War II. These kind of watches, these A11 watches, are actually also called the watches that won the war. And for example, brands like Elgin and Bolova, they produced these watches. And of course, Vince Speranza, who is a two-time Purple Heart and two-time Bronze Star war hero, actually wore one of these watches. He was a machine gunner, and he was made famous by participating in the Battle of the Bulge between 16th of December 1944 and 25th of January 1945 in the Ardennes in Belgium. So what I initially really like about this watch is that it's so anonymous. They just made a very faithful interpretation of these World War II watches, the watches that won the war. So very anonymous. I really enjoy the fact that they didn't even put their name presidents on the dial. Just keep it very true to the original watches from the 1940s. You see, we get cathedral style hands. Let me just turn it here. Very simple dial, this kind of almost kind of light glossy black dial, cathedral style hands with this old H loom. And then you get the railroad track, the minute markings or second markings, 60, 10, 20, 30, 40. And of course also one to 12. So very simple watch. It's all about being extremely legible at a glance. No fuss about this whatsoever. And that's one of the things I really like about the watch. You see here, the very nicely domed sapphire crystal, which is AR treated. So it will not be too hard to actually read the time in different lighting situations. We also see the case here, which is 316L stainless steel. Very anonymous again with the crown here. Big, nice crown. I'll get more into the crown just in a few minutes. Very nice kind of satin brushing on the sides, drilled lock holes, and then you get a nice polishing on the locks here. So you get two types of finishing. I really like the overall finishing of this watch. It would be wrong to do a lot of nice different finishes on this essential military tool watch. And the case back actually gives us all the information. Very cool to have this projectile here. And just to clarify it doesn't actually annoy your wrist when you wear this watch you don't notice it whatsoever so president type a11-2 a 101st airborne division machine gunner at baston 
Vincent J. Speranza, Watch Edition 001, Battle of the Bulge, all the information I gave you before, assembled in the US, imported parts. And you also see this nice screw down case back here. It comes on a nice leather strap. This is almost kind of a racing style strap with all of these holes so your wrist can easily breathe. Simple buckle here. Very simple, you see easy removal spring bars. And then at the end you actually have the barrel of the machine gun, the Browning machine gun that Vince Speranza actually used. You can of course read much more about this watch and Speranza by clicking the link down in the description. So also before we get into the loom, changing the strap, how it wears, and also the accuracy of this watch, you can get the Seiko NH35A version for $275 and the Swiss Movement STP 111 for 485 US dollars. Again, if you want to buy this watch, you pre-order it by paying one US dollar. You can click the link down in the description. Then you actually reserve a place for the lower pre-order initial price of this watch. As I promised, a loom shot. You see this loom actually does a really nice job. This is old radium loom. And I think it's a really, really good, strong loom. You see that the loom on the hands is a little bit weaker, but it's definitely not a big problem for me. Good loom. So also the Seiko NH35A movement, it's a 21,600 beats per hour movement. Seiko movement, of course, Japanese movement, 41 hours of power reserve. And you see the accuracy here on my time grapher. I'm definitely happy with the overall accuracy of this watch. The crown is a really nice big crown. The biggest problem with this is that they actually use the Seiko NH35A, so you actually get a ghost position. In this position, I'm actually changing the date, maybe you can hear it, but you don't have a date. So I would have preferred that they actually used another movement, another Seiko or Myota movement, for example, without the ghost position. It just feels a little bit cheap that they use this movement, which is a good movement. A lot of brands use this Seiko NH35A movement, but without a date, they should have used another no date version of this movement. Then you pull it all the way out, you see hacking, and then you can easily set the time. And of course, manual winding of the movement as well in the first position. I don't know the water resistance of this watch and it's not a screw down crown, but of course these watches, they are not dive watches. So maybe 50 meters would be nice if you get 50 meters, I don't know. So the leather strap, very soft Italian leather and you see Easy removal spring bars here, so you can easily just on the go, take off the strap. Now we have a very naked watch. And then you can, of course, very easily put on the other strap. This is very, very funny that they actually embossed the Browning machine gun into the strap here, you see. Here on the other side as well. So really just going all the way with the gimmick about this World War II watch. And here you have all the information again on the leather strap. And here it is on the other strap. So always nice to get another strap. I wouldn't probably change it. I think they are, I don't have a favorite. That's what I'm trying to say. I, I wouldn't change it, but it's nice to have an extra strap if you're wearing one of the straps down. And of course the dimensions, which are very vintage inspired because 38 millimeters in diameter, 12.8 millimeters in thickness, 19 millimeter lock width, and lock to lock of only 45 millimeters. And here the Vince Speranza watch is on my 17 and a half centimeter wrist circumference. You see it wears really nicely. I don't think it wears too small. It is a small watch and a little smaller than I'm used to, but I don't think it wears too small in any way. It's also very light. It feels really nice on the wrist. So all in all, a very wearable watch and a fun, very legible watch. You can, of course, also put this watch on a NATO strap. That would probably look really, really cool. So let's get into the pluses and the minuses. I did mention some of the minuses. The loom on the hands could be a little bit better, but overall good loom. I think it's just not the right choice to actually have a ghost position in the watch. I think that's a little bit weird. But apart from that, when you look at the loom, the accuracy, you get two straps. You get actually a 
watch that is endorsed, which is inspired and made in cooperation with a real war hero. It's not just some other Asian watch without any history. You get a watch with a really cool history, a really cool history of the war of World War II. I think for 275 US dollars, I think you get a really nice package. And just imagine also with a Swiss movement, less than 500 US dollars is also a nice value proposition. So I want to say thank you to Presidess Watches for sending in this watch for review. Full disclosure, I get to keep the watch. So I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I will see you very soon again. Thank you. Bye.